Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. I hope you had a great week. I had a pretty fun weekend. We went to CatCon here in LA. Uh, it was a convention purely tied to cat related uh, subject matters. There's a lot of fun prints, stickers, fridge magnets. You can even adopt kittens. Uh, it was super fun to attend to and very inspiring. I'm always on the lookout for new ideas of what to paint and naturally after going to this convention, I kind of wanted to paint something cat related. I wanted to try to capture the essence of what a cat is to me, which is very lazy, <laughs> into a painting. Uh, I also got a great question uh, regarding how to create focal point and kind of the importance of it. Do you, need, do you even need to have a focal point? Uh, I'll talk a bit about that in the episode as well, sharing my point of view on that. And I also want to share some things about blur and how you can use it to help make things read a bit better in your paintings. So if that's something you're interested in or you simply like cats, I hope you enjoy this episode. But let's jump straight into it, shall we? First thing I did for this painting, I did a quick thumbnail where I tried to really focus on exploring the lighting. I really wanted also to play with a lot of blur and bloom effects, so I wanted to try and figure that out earlier because this kind of became my north star and I kept referring to it throughout the painting process. And since we were pretty early on, uh, one thing I really like when you do explore things early on, you're not really afraid to do bold decisions and try things because you can so easily tweak it. So just keeping the values pretty simple, playing around with some color dodge to really pump up the bloom effect that I really wanted to have because I knew early on I was going to have a lot of blur behind the cat and a bit in front. So adding, trying this now early on kind of gave me a feel of what the final image could look like. So with that done, it's much easier for me to start painting because I already know what kind of finished look I want to go for when it comes to the bloom. So I'm just going to kind of slowly build up towards that. But also like I mentioned at the start of the video, video, I want to talk a bit about focal point and share a bit how I like to think about it. Because when you think about it, like an image has to have a focal point in most cases. If you're kind of trying for something more abstract, then maybe a focal point is not really needed. But if you want to create an image where the viewer can get lead into the image, you kind of have to decide what's important in the image. And there's many different ways you can create a focal point. If we look at the example from this painting from Dean Cornwell, it's a really beautiful painting and the focal point is pretty clear. And this is very different from the abstract painting where the, the value did not have, there was no value in having a focal point versus in the more traditional painting, there was a clear focus of the painting. You can also have many different focal points. There's no need to have specifically two. Uh, I kind of like to keep, when I do my paintings, I try to stick to somewhere between three and four or between two and four. Uh, because I feel like sometimes if you have too much, it gets a bit hard to follow. But if you have just the right amount, you can kind of lead the viewer into the image. For this painting itself, I try to focus a lot on the cat being the main focus and you travel a bit up to the left that's where I put the red and then we go all the way in the back into the image where the trees are there was not so much ne necessarily visual interest there but kind of just we just want to lead the viewer into the image which could also work with the way you do focal points and by determining that early on, it allows me to focus more on making the image. One thing that's also pretty important is I'm aware that I'm going to blur a lot of things behind the cat and I'm going to blur it pretty intensely and it's all going to mush and melt together pretty well. And because of being aware of that, I, I did not want to spend a lot of time rendering out things because I know it's going to be blurred pretty heavily. And that's one cool things when you try that early on, you can really focus on, okay, I know I'm going to blur that. I don't have to focus that heavily on it, especially if you know it's going to be heavily blurred. You can really like be very abstract, which I actually quite like. And just focus on sculpting the form of the cat itself because that is going to be clearly in sharp and in focus. So really want to make that read and pop pretty well. And the way I personally like to think when I do blur in my images is I would like to take, you know, if we look at this image, for instance, right here. So we have almost three layers. We have foreground, midground and background. And then it's, you can read the image, it works pretty well, but like to really make it read better by blurring out the foreground and the background in different intensity, you know, the foreground's a bit more blurred than the one in the back. It really allows us to focus on the centerpiece of this image. And it, it just makes it feel a bit more natural and less overwhelming because sometimes to me personally, 
uh, I feel like images can have a bit too much information because when we look at things uh, with our eyes, you know, we can't see everything sharply. Certain things become sharp and other things fall out of focus. And that's something I like to do a lot with my paintings as well, just to play around with that same idea because it makes it just more easier to digest paintings. Um, this is a personal taste. I would encourage you to give it a try. Photoshop has a lot of really fun blur uh, filters. My favorite is the Gaussian blur. It's simply going to the filter section, popping down the blur and then the Gaussian blur. But there's a lot of really good one like lens blur uh, where you can get it, make, make it look more realistic like a camera blur. I don't know how to use it yet, so I can't really help on that. Uh, but I would encourage you to play around with some blur settings. Play around with the ones in Photoshop and really try to see what could work better for your painting because it can really help things uh, pop up into focus and really drop things out of focus and also just help the re image read as a whole. Uh, and I feel, I feel like we're getting to the final part of the painting. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it. Drawing lazy cats is a pretty fun and relaxing topic. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, let me know in the comment section below if there's subject matter things you're personally interested about. I'm always looking for inspiration for future videos. And be sure to subscribe. A new episode comes out each Friday. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.